It's always been my drug. I live for it, basically. Dick Warner continues his magical journey along the rugged and beautiful coast of the west of Ireland in the yacht Rin Voyager on Voyage, Tuesday, 8.30 on RTE1. In a world of decadence... A girl of that age still a virgin. It's absurd. She found the ideal partner. I love being with you. The closest friend. I tend to be rather impulsive in these matters. Like the time I asked to Virginia Woolf to marry me. And the perfect illusion... So homosexual. ...of love. There are times when I feel like a character in a farce by Moliere. The true story of an intimate relationship. Emma Thompson and Jonathan Price in Carrington, Wednesday at 9.30 on RTE1. And staying with movies, Mickey Rooney stars in our late, late movie, Quicksand, at 12.45. Well, at 11.20 tonight, you can see highlights of this, morning, this morning's commemoration ceremony from the Royal Hospital Kilmainham. Now, though, we join Sharon Yviolan for tonight's Main Evening News. Mr Blair warns its last chance for peace ahead of Thursday's deadline. After extensive air and sea search, divers find body of young swimmer off Bray Head. A positive first meeting between Ahud Barak and Yasser Arafat both say progress is achievable. And Schumacher survives horrific crash as Coulthard wins at Silverstone. Good evening. The British Prime Minister Tony Blair said today there was little more he could do to help the peace process in Northern Ireland if politicians failed to break the deadlock over decommissioning by Thursday's deadline. In Dublin, the Taoiseach met an Ulster Unionist Party delegation led by David Trimble in an effort to resolve the difficulties. There are only four days left to the Irish and British government's deadline for the parties to agree to form an executive. Today, Tony Blair said he had taken it as far as he could if progress couldn't be made by Thursday. It really is a question of, of whether people are prepared to decommission their paramilitary weapons and take the gun out of the politics of Northern Ireland and whether on the other side people are prepared to share power. And, uh, you know, you, there's, there's only so many ways you can dress that proposition up. But Ulster Unionist leader David Trimble, writing in a Sunday newspaper, indicated that he wanted the deadline to be postponed. He said he wanted the SDLP to guarantee that Sinn Féin would be expelled from the executive if the IRA did not hand over its weapons. That if I gamble, and the gamble is a mistake, then we lose the process and we lose the current leadership of the Ulster Unionist Party. That is the risk. And I don't think that other parties realise the extent to which they're prepared to gamble with this process. However, SDLP leader John Hume said that if he gave the Unionists the assurance they were looking for, it could make Mr Trimble's position easier, but it would make it more difficult for the other parties. Sinn Féin's Barbara de Bruyne criticised Tony Blair for encouraging Unionists to constantly seek reassurances instead of making progress. The Taoiseach met with an Ulster Unionist delegation led by David Trimble in Dublin today. He said there will be further contact with all the parties over the next few days. Orla O'Donnell, RTE News. Security is tight in central Belfast tonight ahead of tomorrow's rally of up to 20,000 orange men at Ormo Park, close to the nationalist Lower Ormo Road. OUC and British Army personnel have already begun to move into the area around the park. And in Fermanagh, the OUC allowed a small protest by nationalist residents during the contentious parade in Newtown Butler this evening. Security in the town is said to be low-key. The parade is passing off peacefully. Since 1996, the predominantly nationalist town of Newton Butler has been fraught with tension during the marching season. Two years ago, there were violent clashes after the RUC forced back a nationalist protest against a banned Orange March. Today's parade by the District Orange Lodge was approved by the Parades Commission, but Orange men will be prevented from marching back to the town after tomorrow's 12th of July County Parade. Residents feel aggrieved here that Orange men have refused to talk to them since 1997. This year it was believed nationalists from neighbouring counties would come to show their support. In the end, the residents agreed to abide by the Parades Commission Code of Conduct and the RUC restrictions on the protest. 
Following negotiations, they were allowed a token protest along the march route, and the affair has so far passed off peacefully. We don't want to be here next year. We want the Orange Road to enter in dialogue. As we have for the veterans of this community, if they come together with us, we have a talks team ready. There's no need for this. Both the residents' protest and the RUC presence here have been more low-key than previous years. This will be an encouraging sign on the eve of tomorrow's potentially confrontational 12th of July arrangements in Ormo Park in Belfast. Tony Connolly, RTE News, Newton Butler. The body of a swimmer missing off Bray Head in County Wicklow has been found. The man, who was believed to be aged around 20 and from Dublin, got into difficulties while swimming with two of his friends. All over the country, people were making the most of today's heat wave, with temperatures of up to 25 degrees. Beaches were packed, and Bray, particularly as it's so accessible on the Dart Line, was no exception. But the day turned to tragedy for one group of three friends, who were among thousands of people enjoying the sun and sea. Just after midday, the alarm was raised when two of them were reported to be in difficulties, clinging to a rock. A third had swum to safety. One was recovered from Seagull Rock by an Irish Marine Emergency Services Sikorsky helicopter. He was taken to Lachlanstown Hospital and treated for minor injuries. The helicopter, two lifeboats from Dunleary, the Irish Marine Emergency Team from Greystones and some local boats continued in the search for the missing swimmer. They were joined by members of the Garda Subaqua team who found his body just over an hour ago. Cathy Milner, RT News, Bray. Israel's new Prime Minister Ehud Barak had his first official meeting with the Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat today at the Erez crossing between Israel and the Gaza Strip. Afterwards, both leaders reaffirmed their commitment to the peace process and said they were determined to overcome the obstacles that lay ahead. This meeting was about confidence building. Israeli officials said it represented a first step. The Palestinians said they were ready to begin a new chapter and wipe out the past three years of mistrust. The last interim agreement, the Y peace deal, worked out in October, promised more land to the Palestinians in exchange for...